What can you learn about coding using a Rubik's Cube? Now, lots of people make demo videos and training courses about coding skills and test-driven development in particular. But to be honest, a lot of them aren't very good. And even if you do know some TDD already, you might not be able to tell that. Now, I've been training and coaching developers for over 25 years, and I know a few things about teaching TDD. And recently, I discovered a skill acquisition model from Marion Hartman, and it explains why what I do works and why a lot of training just fails to get you there. So in this video, I'm going to go through Hartman's model and explain what happens when you learn a practical skill and how you can spot good training using a Rubik's Cube. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. I would like to thank my sponsor, Tuple. They make a tool for remote ensemble and pair programming. A small bootstrapped team of engineers who care deeply about software quality. I've tried Tuple and it worked well. It was really smooth, especially to switch who is typing. It feels great to partner with like-minded people and have Tuple as our first sponsor. If you're looking for a tool to make pair and ensemble programming easier, more effective and fun, check out the link in the show notes. Can you solve a Rubik's Cube? I actually can't. I understand largely how it's done, but I haven't put in the necessary practice. I'd need to watch a bunch of videos demoing it, but I'd still need hours of practice before it would stick. TDD is very similar. You need practice and you need the right kind. I'm going to use this Rubik's Cube to explain how skill acquisition happens. Now, this is a video of my daughter, Miranda, who has spent many hours practicing. She can usually solve a cube in under a minute. So you can see her fingers are flying about, bits of cube are twisting in all directions. And if you watch closely, you can see some of what she's doing. Sometimes she stops twisting the pieces and just turns the cube, examining the situation. And then in a flurry of motion, she'll apply a particular sequence of moves to achieve a new position. Towards the end, there aren't very many options, so it goes faster and faster, and eventually she gets this solved cube. Now I'm talking about solving Rubik's Cubes because it's visual, it's easy to understand, and it's analogous to test-driven development. All of these are practical skills that you need to actually be able to do, not just explain how to do them. And how quickly and smoothly you can solve a particular problem or a code cutter is a measure of how skilled you are. So I'm going to show the Rubik's Cube analogy to explain the Hartman skill acquisition model. I met Marion Hartman recently and learning about her model was an actual light bulb moment for me. It basically explains why Saman coaching works. Hartman's model has six stages and it applies to any practical skill like TDD or refactoring or solving a Rubik's Cube. We're going to go through the stages. The first stage is familiarity. Before you get here, you had no idea that this was even a thing. If you're at the familiar stage of a Rubik's Cube, then you've seen a cube, you've held it in your hands, you can twist the layers and you can move the pieces around. Just that. Beyond there, the next stage is comprehension. Some understanding of what the skill actually is. You understand that the point is to get all the same color squares on each side to be on the same, and that you achieve this by twisting the layers you know that there are some sequences of moves that will solve specific parts of that problem. And you might know the names of some of them. You might be able to describe them. You might know that there's such a thing as rotating a corner, but not really how to do that. The third stage is conscious effort. And this means you start to be able to actually do some of this skill. You can recognize a situation, follow a recipe and achieve a new situation. So you'd know the recipe for rotate a corner. You probably need the instructions in front of you or to have seen a demo, but you could follow that specific sequence of moves. So this is a clip of my daughter trying to get me to this stage, showing me the steps for rotating a corner. I'm at the conscious effort stage. I know some of what I'm supposed to do. I'm not always successful. I can recognize a few situations. I can recognize a few recipes but I don't know enough of them well enough to actually solve a cube. It's at the conscious action stage 
where you start to be generally successful at recognizing a situation and applying a recipe. You might not be able to solve an entire cube, but you can recognize many different situations that the cube could be in and mostly know which recipe to apply, although you might still need to look up some of those. So as well as being able to do a move like rotate a corner, you'd also at this stage be able to achieve F2L using the CFOP method. And this is what that looks like when my daughter Miranda does it. She's perhaps a little smoother and faster than you'd expect for someone at the conscious action stage, but hopefully you get the idea of what's involved. There are still recipes and moves that you don't know well enough to use reliably, but you'll meet lots of situations where you, you do know what to do. It's when you get to the fifth level, proficient, that you can generally be successful solving a cube. You no longer need to look up instructions most of the time. You know the moves for the needed transformations. It can still take you some time though, because you need to turn the cube frequently to look at the position from different angles, think about what to do next. You generally do know more than one way to tackle any given situation though, and you can reason about which one to choose. The final sixth stage of this model is unconscious competence. Someone will hand you a cube and you can solve it in seconds without it taking all that much conscious effort, just like my daughter does. The moves your fingers are making are smooth and fast. When you get to a situation where there's more than one way to solve it, you perhaps can't fully explain why you chose a particular sequence of moves. Unconscious competence. So that's the model explained with Rubik's Cubes. The interesting part is how to use this to design TDD training or evaluate TDD training. Your goal, I guess, is to be able to use TDD in your normal production code. And many TDD training courses will not get you there. So don't forget, if you're enjoying the video so far, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you're gonna do TDD in your production code, you need to get to proficient, the fifth level of this model. You can't skip stages, and some approaches will get you there faster and more easily than others. To be fair, most TDD training will probably get you to level three, conscious effort. For that, you need to see some demos with explanations, and you need to try out TDD for yourself on some straightforward code carters. The trouble is, very few TDD trainings that I've seen are detailed enough and comprehensive enough to show you all the recipes you need, let alone get you enough practice to reach the next stage. Most training will just drop you here at the conscious effort stage. They'll suggest some code carters that you could go and practice on and then just abandon you way before you're able to do TDD in your production code, or even actually reliably solve a lot of code carters. As I mentioned before, before you're gonna be able to do TDD in your production code, you need to reach the fifth level, proficient. And that's largely why I stopped doing coding dojos, because they don't get you there. Production code is really complex compared with most code carters. And you need to know a lot of recipes and different moves, and you need to be able to be really reliable using the moves that you know. And that's why any training that just stops with you pairing on code carters with your peers will probably fail. In order to reach proficient, you need practice with realistic situations and you need access to the full range of recipes and moves. And that's why, in my experience, you need mentoring or technical coaching. You need somebody who has already reached the proficient stage or better, who can give you specific advice when you meet those situations where you don't know the best approach. Or perhaps when you know the best approach, but you're not skilled enough to do it. Mentoring in the production code in a pair or ensemble is the best way I know to get that. And that's a big part of the Saman method and a major reason why it works so well. If you're looking to learn to solve a Rubik's cube or learn test-driven development, my advice is by all means, start by watching a few videos and demos, try out a few cubes and code carters for yourself, but then look for some training you can do together with other people at a similar level. It's more fun and you'll learn faster if you help one another and give each other feedback. 
You need lots of practice of all the moves in different situations, and it would help to have an instructor showing you really targeted demos. But then after that, I'm pretty sure you'll need some mentoring in real production situations before you get proficient. I recommend you find a technical coach. Lots of us hang out in the Saman Society. Check out our website and sign up for our newsletter. So what do you think? Is learning TDD like learning to solve a Rubik's Cube? Does Hartman's model it help you identify good training? Let me know in a comment. Happy coding and solving Rubik's Cubes.